find the points on the ellipse 4x squared plus y squared equals 4 that are furthest away from the point 1, 0. Okay, so the fact that they tell you it's an ellipse is great. It's not in the standard form that we usually see ellipse equations in. Normally the equation is x squared over some a squared and y squared over some b squared set equal to 1. And then from there we could tell what the graph will look like where you go plus or minus a along the one axis and plus or minus b along the other axis. This is centered at the origin. So now what we're going to do instead um, is take our equation and make it look like that. We have the right hand, right hand side equal to 4 and we'd like for the right hand side to be equal to 1. So we take our equation and we divide everything through by 4. And what that gives us is uh, x squared over 1 plus y squared over 4 now is equal to 1. So we have the equation. We know that we go plus or minus 1 along the x-axis plus or minus 2 along the y-axis. And so um, let's, let's go ahead and graph that. So this is what the ellipse looks like. And now it's our job to find the points that are on this ellipse that are furthest away from the point 1, 0. Here's the point 1, 0. It's on the ellipse. When x is 1 and y is 0, it's a true statement. And so now we want to find there's two points on this ellipse. Um, it says points here. It's given away. Um, two points on this ellipse that are furthest away from this particular point. I'm going to mark them off here. You, you would think that the other point ac across the ellipse, uh, negative 1, 0, uh, would be you know the furthest away, but actually it's not. That distance is 2. And we're going to see that um, there are other points that are uh, further away from that. And so I have them marked off here. We're going to find out what they are. So, so let's, let's set up an equation. It is the, uh, going to represent distance. We're trying to maximize distance. And so distance from where? Furthest away from the point 1, 0. So take a random point out in space, x, y, and we want it to be uh, a formula that calculates the distance from that random point to the point 1, 0. So we go to the distance formula, where we subtract the x's and square and subtract the y's and square, add those up, and then take a square root. So we have this distance formula. And if we um, just look at the, the y part, it's y minus nothing. So we'll just go with the distance being equal to this. Now, if we were to use this formula, um, it would make the algebra almost undoable. And so it, with this function being a square root function, if we can maximize what's underneath the square root, then we would be maximizing the square root. So let's focus our attention on what's underneath the square root. Call it some other variable. Call it um, capital D, which is basically your distance squared. And let's maximize that instead. When we maximize the square of the distance, we'll be maximizing the distance. So here's our formula that we want to maximize. x minus 1 quantity squared plus y squared. And the problem with it is that it has two variables. We have an x and a y. What we need is a way to relate the variables to each other. We need y as a function of x, or x as a function of y. And so we have that these aren't any two random points out in the xy plane, as if they, you know, we have this generic coordinate uh, xy. There's something special about these points. These points are on the ellipse. So that means that they satisfy the ellipse equation. The, the point xy that we're looking for satisfies 4x squared plus y squared equals 4. So it's like a constraint. And what we could do is solve for one of the variables and determine the other. Now we don't have to actually solve for y as a function of x. We notice that in our equation we have y squared. And so what we can do is we also see that y squared is in our ellipse equation. So what we could do is solve for y squared by just subtracting the 4x squared over. And then we can use that to substitute. Okay, so the constraint comes from the fact that the point is actually on the ellipse and we solve for y squared and we get that y squared is 4 minus 4x squared. Great. So we take that and replace the y squared with that. We say, now the distance that we're trying to uh, maximize, this distance squared, is the quantity x minus 1 squared and now instead of y squared we replace it with 4 minus 4x squared. Okay, what are we supposed to do with this? We're supposed to maximize this. Take the derivative, set it equal to zero, and make an argument as to why you have maximized it by doing that. Uh, we can multiply out. Definitely, I mean, definitely can take x minus one quantity squared and multiply out. 
But it's not necessary. I mean, taking a derivative of it would just be pulling the 2 down using the power rule since the inside has a 1 as its derivative. So we bring the 2 down. We take the x minus 1 to the first power. And then in the second part here, the, the, the second term, 4, has 0 as its derivative. And then minus 4x squared has a minus 8x as its derivative. It's our job to solve for where this is equal to 0. If we distribute the 2 across, we get 2x minus 2. And then we're going to take away from that 8x. So let's put the x's together. Combine the x's. We have a negative 6x. And then that's supposed to be equal to 2, essentially. If we, if we shift the 2 over to the other side. So we divide by the 6, and we get what x is. x is negative 1 third. It kind of goes with what we thought in our picture, that these two points share the same x value. They're on the same um, vertical line, or they share the same x value. I mean, they're going to have different y values, but they share the same x value. And so then... We, all we've shown is that we have the derivative set equal to zero, and this is the happen to be the x value that solves that. We haven't shown that we've maximized the function yet. And so we need to prove that we have maximized the function. Let's go ahead and find the y's that are associated with this x. When you plug it back into your ellipse equation, the fact that x is negative one third, or you can even plug into the, um, the one that you're, where you have solved for y squared, we have y squared is four minus four times uh, a third squared, which is a ninth. And so um, 32 ninths minus 4 ninths, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 36 ninths, that's what 4 is. 36 ninths uh, minus 4 ninths gives us our 32 ninths, that's what y squared is. And now here we go, we're about to take the square root, and that's why we get plus or minus. So we take the square root, uh, square root of 32 divided by the square root of 9, but can't leave the square root of 32 underneath there. It, it has a perfect square that can go into it, 16 goes into it. And so here we have the two values of y. 4 plus, um, plus or minus uh, 4 root 2 over 3, and, and so this guy would be the positive 4 root 3 over 2, and this guy would be the negative 4 root 3 over 2. These are our two points, but we have to officially answer the question fully, and we haven't done that yet. So we have a couple options what we could do. Uh, we, can, we can look at the derivative and take its second derivative. Um, that might be the best option. Uh, here's one option that I have. I'll show you the other option, too. Um, we can set it up like a section 4.1 problem where we have the smallest x and the largest x. And then we, um, we can um, make a chart based on that interval and then also have the um, critical point also to evaluate the function at. Then we're evaluating capital D, which later we can go and figure out what lowercase d is. And so, yes, the smallest x is negative 1 and the biggest x is 1. There are no other x's outside of that range that should be considered because x is outside of that range don't fall on the ellipse. So you plug a negative 1 into your distance formula and of course that's going to give you a 2, right? This distance between these two points is 2 and so distance squared would be 4 and when you plug a 1 in you're going to get 0. So what happens when you plug a negative 1 third in? And you work it out and you find out that it's 48 ninths. Okay, and that's that's more than four, right? Forty-eight ninths. Um, it would be thirty-six over nine to give you to give you four, and so we have the uh, the different values for the distance squared, and if we wanted to, we can go and find that um, the distance is the square root of this, and so there's nothing wrong with that. Let's go ahead and do it. So we have we have the uh, the actual distance between these points, of course, is the square root of four, which is two. And then the distance between uh, the point and itself is zero. And here, if you go with square root, um, the distance is going to be well. The square root of forty-eight has a perfect forty-eight has a perfect square, and it's sixteen. It's sixteen times three, and so we have four root three is what that simplifies to be, and that's over uh, three because the square root of nine is is three. All right, great. So this is these are the distances, and this guy is our max distance. It represents the distance between these two points and it answers the question now we didn't have to answer it this way the proving of the fact that we do have the absolute maximum we didn't have to answer it that way but this guy here is our absolute maximum okay uh, what we could have done is this here's our derivative if we take a second derivative what we would get would be 2 uh, minus 8. Our second derivative is negative. It's a negative 6. If the second derivative is negative, then that means that your function, d, 
in this case, capital D, is always concave down. And so how could you have a function that's always concave down and at the same time have this, this, this x value which, which leads to a local maximum when you're at negative one third You'll have the derivative positive on one side and negative on the other side. We have this local maximum, but if you're always concave down, the local maximum turns into an absolute maximum. So we could have answered it that way. So this leads to an absolute max. Okay, great. And so we officially answered the question and. Um, so we're done with that. Good job.